Hello everyone, my name is General Fancy Pants, and welcome back to Edna and Harvey, Harvey's New Eyes. And let's see, it seems kind of loud right now, so let me adjust the settings a little bit. If I can get there, there we go. Let's crank that down just a little bit. Alright. Alrighty. Okay, so when we last left off, I have honestly no idea because it's been a very, very long time since I played this. And I do really want to get through this game. So, yes, let's continue on. There is a way, I think. Um, maybe not. I thought there was a way where you can actually, uh, uh, yeah, I remember that. Hit the space bar and tells you all the interactive things, but I thought there was a way where you have, like, a journal or something like that where it kind of tells you... I don't know. Anyway, I do remember that we were walking around uh, the convent doing a little exploring and things. <sighs> I just don't remember what I was supposed to do. And even if I did remember what I was supposed to do, I probably <laughs> wouldn't even remember how to do it. So we'll see how this goes. Anyway, back to actually playing the game rather than rambling on about playing the game. So while we're here, can we take a look at these... Firecrackers, it looks like. Firecrackers. How did they ever get up there? Okay, now it's too quiet. I should have checked this stuff before I actually started recording, but yeah, you know. Okay. Let's try that again. Firecrackers. How did they ever get up there? Much better. The gargoyle seemed to worry about its companion, but it also didn't lift a finger to stop it from falling. <laughs> Typical. Oh, yes. It does look like that gargoyle is about to fall off. It looks like we have a clock here. The school clock was out of reach. As is most everything else up here. And it looks like that's it for that. Let's see. I remember the collection is where uh, the old man was. And he wanted us to, uh, we need him to help out Frank, I believe his name was, who was in the uh, chapel trying to look for the conspiracy of the Templars under the, uh, the floor. And the classroom was where, oh hey, look at that. Or Birgit, or I think that's her name, Birgit. I think that's how you sp pronounce it. I gave her something to do. Let's talk to her. What are you waiting for? The banner has to go to the cafeteria as quickly as possible. I do remember that. The banner was magnificent. Birgit had done an incredible job. Okay. That's right. That's what I was doing. So this banner, um, Mother Superior wanted this uh, banner for the cafeteria because there was one banner missing. We need a replacement one to fully, uh, I don't know what the word would be, but fully encapsulate exactly what the school represented. It's a little jumpy. I don't know what that is, but anywho. All right, let's see. Let's talk to Mother Superior. Stop dawdling. Feed the cat. And don't forget to remind Birgit to finish the embroidery. If the self-control motif isn't finished today, I will really blow my top. Self-control? <laughs> Is important. <sighs> now leave. I have to drink a calming tea. <laughs> I probably need more than tea to calm down there, lady. But we do have the banner, the guinea pig banner, which is the very epitome of self-control. Is a guinea pig. Ah. Birgit has finally finished the new banner, but what's that? A small, 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 
the dirty guinea pig. <laughs> oh boy. Bigot didn't really make this, did she? Uh huh. <laughs> that can't, that can't be true. Can I not rely on anyone here? Just you wait. She'll uh. get what's coming to her. Oh boy, Brigitte. I am so sorry that I gave you the idea to make a guinea pig banner. Birgit should have tried harder. Yeah, he actually should have. That Birgit. Well, let's see if maybe we can uh, cut off Mother Superior before she gets the Birgit. <laughs> I, forget. <laughs> I forget how funny this game is. I just think the humor in it is pretty funny. Into the classroom. <sighs> oh boy, this isn't good. I can't even tell you how disappointed I am in you, Birgit. This is the worst job I've seen in my entire career. But <laughs> don't talk back. You are bad. I will probably have to strip you of all your awards, prizes, and Girl Scout badges. You no longer oh, deserve boy. any of them. But I only did what? Hogwash. Do you really wish to contradict me? I can't believe how low you've sunk, Birgit. A guinea pig? It's unbelievable. Your work <laughs> is an insult to the entire convent. Get oh, rid boy. of it. I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to. Oh, I feel bad for her. Your whining <laughs> won't make up for your failures. Just in case you decide not to waste my time with your ineptitude anymore. Here is a motif that's worth immortalizing on a banner. The puma. Strong, the puma. precise, dignified. A symbol <laughs> of self c c control. <laughs> oh, Birgit. Why? I don't know if I should even talk to her, but I'm, I'm going. Oh, look at that. We can take the puma model, potentially. All right, let's take a look at Birgit first. It served Birgit right. Incompetence had to be punished. That's true, I suppose, but considering that we were the one who gave her the idea of the guinea pig, I feel somewhat responsible. I feel like I had a small part to play in that. <sighs> All right, what about this puma model? Puma. The animal motifs were taboo for Lily. Mother Superior only allowed her to embroider crosses and lines. But Lily could barely manage even those and often received a scolding. Can we take the Puma model? Stop that! I need that as a template! Uh, okay, let's talk Lily to Birgit. Lily would have liked to come for But on the other hand, it really was her own fault. Lily hoped for Birgit's sake that she would try a little harder with the Puma motif. Okay, so, back in this cabinet, as you can see here, there's a grizzly bear model, and a porcupine model, and a green to screen. And if you remember, I think it was two episodes ago, when we did the logic puzzle, and um, to jog uh, the, uh, I can't remember what his name is, but basically the old man in the, uh, the collections room, to jog his memory, he needed certain... Uh, things to trigger his memory and those things were these fruit the banana the coconut and the apple and he also had some animals which represented feelings and here's two of those animals a porcupine and a grizzly bear the animal motifs were taboo for Lily mothers right, but Lily seen those heard that many times so maybe we need these to help him jog his memory in addition to the various fruits which I think represented I can't remember what they represented off the top of my head at the moment but they represented something the embroidery was of a unicorn with eight legs Lily loved the unusual embroidery more than anything but she didn't know who had made it when asked about it, Mother Superior was even more vexed than usual. I think that eight-legged horse that just occurred to me now, I think that's actually like a... Uh, like... Uh, one of, uh, Escher, I think his name is, where he made like kind of weird, impossible 
uh, drawings. I think that was one of them, where like the legs looked like they're in front, but they weren't, and all that kind of weird stuff. Anyway, so now we have a deer model and a porcupine model. The animal motif, mother's right. butt Just take them, take them. Okay, so now we have the three motifs of the deer, the porcupine, and the bear, and we have the three fruits: the apple, the coco or the apple, the coconut, and the banana. So now we can maybe talk to the old man who remembered everybody, or not everybody, who lived like forever. I think he helped build the pyramids, if I remember correctly. Something like that. Yes, here's the notepad. Okay, there we go. So, the fruits, except everyone knows everyone kind of food, it generates exactly one emotion. Oh, okay, so the fruit is the emotion, and then the animals were, um, uh, helped you do certain things, like had strength, heroism, and anger. So, an apple is happy. The banana is sad, and the coconut was is angry. So the banana is sad, and the co uh, por porcupine. So these are I think these are correlated. So the sadness and the porcupine are two things that are um, related. Hmm. And then the apple is happiness with, uh, I think, the bear is strength. And then the coconut is anger and heroic deeds. I think is how that worked. I don't remember. I'll be honest. <laughs> anyway. So let's go talk to... Uh, first, actually... I feel like I might be missing something else. Because there's a shelf space right here. I think this is where you put certain the certain uh, items. Let's talk to him with those things on there. Hmm. W what? Do we know each other? Uh huh. Oh, okay. Yes, I do need a the third piece there. Because on here, we're missing the faces. <laughs> uh, we're missing the emotion faces. And if you remember when we were, I think it was actually the last episode, when we were wandering about... In the main hall... I think it was upstairs, onto the stairway. And I see there's a chandelier, and there's something else in that chandelier. Just in passing. But here you can see that these masks, the sad mask, happy mask, and angry mask, all seem to match those emotions that we need. But I think... Well, maybe we can just take it. Hmm... <sighs> The mask was tightly screwed into the wall. But did that also mean that one wasn't allowed to take it? No, it only means you have to find the right tools. Ah, oh, that's freaky. Something small enough to use the screws. Oh, what luck. Lily was relieved. Okay, so we need a screwdriver or something similar to unscrew the mask. Let's see, it looks like we have a chandelier attachment. That doesn't seem to... That's a bolt, not a screw. Do I have anything in my inventory that might be small enough? Let me look. Uh, my inventory bugged out there for a minute. There we go. I have a board, an apple, banana, marbles, porcupine. Nothing that really would work. Hmm. Let's go into... Not the dormitory. That's not where I wanted to go. Oh, yeah, those girls. Those girls are funny. 
I know we can get a hint from Edna. Let's talk to her real quick. And are you making progress? Ah, uh, no. All right. <sighs> All this to help Edna not get captured by Garrett, I think. Um, I'm trying to remember how to get to. As you can see, it has been a very long time. Ooh, I, there's a painting up here I can look at. Lily had always liked the large painting in the main hall. It showed a dining table after a big meal with a man in the center who had found the last cookie. <laughs> Lily giggled at the thought that he would eat it all by himself, no matter how much the others begged. <laughs> I guess that's, that's one way of looking at the Last Supper. All right, let's take Oh, there's a balloon in there. That's what it is. I feel like I just heard door, um, doors opening and closing in the background. It was hopeless. Edna's balloon was hanging out of reach. Ah, yes, that was one of the things I needed to get rid of so that it would look like she wasn't there. What I'm trying to find is how to get into Mother Superior's uh, uh, office. Ooh, look at that. The surveillance room is open. I wonder if that's the door I was holding, uh, heard in the background before. There's Frank with the wiggly cross. Okay, well, I think this is a good place to stop right here. Uh, in the next episode, we will continue figuring out what we need to do. Uh, sorry for the randomness of this one, but we did make a little progress. We did get... Uh, so the motifs, and we got the fruit. So we're a couple steps closer to helping out Frank anyway. And we'll uh, check out what's in this uh, confessional booth here. Looks like a lot of gadgetry for being a confession booth. And it looks like it's a surveillance room. So we'll explore all that and more in the next episode. Until then, 